Okay, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the online information event for high tech engineering. Um, my name is Simon. Um, I'm the program coordinator for engineering. Um, I'm also one of the lecturers and I deliver on most of the programs. Um, I'm joined today by my colleague Ben. Um, he's also a lecturer um, in engineering and he also looks after the HE program, our higher education program, um, from HNC all, all the way up to um, a degree in engineering. So our intention today is, is to give you information on, on potential courses to study engineering at South Devon College. Um, the slide I've just brought on now basically highlights the um, main courses that we have at FE. So our first course is a level one course. Um, this is the first year that we've run a level one engineering course. And what we've done this year is we're going to be working in cooperation with marine engineering. So this course is basically going to be a flavor, a taster for engineering. It will also give the, um, the learners a, a taster for marine engineering and the rest of the course will be there to allow people to work on maths and English um, as well as, as, as engineering as well. The next course we have is level two. Um, that is a EAL qualification and it is a diploma in engineering. Um, this course is a one year course um, at level two. Um, and the idea of this course is it will give you the um, machine skills required for engineering. So this course is um, predominantly based around our engineering workshop in the high tech and digital centre. Um, not all classes are in the workshop. There are some theory classes as well, but it's a more hands on course. Um, so units would include um, lathes and mills, engineering drawing, um, they did a welding unit this year, um, and they also do a uh, 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 maths unit as well. Um, the course is designed for students to gain practical skills and also to um, potentially move on to a, a level three course. So the next course that we have available is another EAL course, and it's our Diploma in Engineering Technology, uh, which we call Advanced Machining. The, this course is designed to uh, lead on from the level two. Um, it is a predominantly practical course. However, um, there is slightly more um, classroom based units at level three. Units would include CAD, um, CNC machining, uh, we do some automation control as well uh, and this course really is designed for learners um, to gain an apprenticeship um, and to allow them to uh, to get the skills that they require our next level three course is the btech extended diploma so this is our a level equivalent um, this course is run over two years so there are two qualifications the first year um, all students will receive a qualification and at the end of the second year you'll receive hopefully an extended diploma which has the same academic weight as three A levels. So it's three A levels split over 18 subjects um, and those subjects are from maths, CAD, CNC, hydraulics, um, pneumatics, engineering drawing, um, health and safety, electrical technology, electrical electronic principles, mechanical principles. Um, it's a very academic course um, and there is lots of different forms of assessment which we will talk about later on. So if you're looking for um, the UCAS route um, and you have good GCSEs then you'll be looking at the level 3 BTEC. Um, if, you, if it doesn't necessarily mean that you would not necessarily come on at level two, a lot of our students want to do the machining skills and, and we'll do the level two course first. So this next slide um, gives us a bit more of a, a flow diagram of, of where um, potential students could, could enter. So the student comes in at the top left there um, and depending on their 
GCSE qualifications and will decide between coming at level two or level one. Um, students that come in at level two um, have two pathways on completion of their course. They can hopefully gain an apprenticeship with one of our local engineering companies. And we currently work with 30 plus companies within the South Devon area. Or they could move on to level three advanced machining uh, where they could gain another year experience. Uh, we're finding some of our learners at sort of 16 stroke 17 are still not quite ready for apprenticeship. So the advanced technology course has, has, been, a, has been a good course for them. They could decide that actually they want to now go down the academic route and they do the level three BTEC diploma. Um, so what are we looking people to do after the diploma? Um, they could go ahead to the university, um, any, any university, they could do a UCAS search. Um, we have examples of people who've gone all over the country for, uh, from our level three course. Or they could stay with us um, and we have two HE full-time programs. Um, one is a manufacturing design mechatronics based and the other one is a robotic stroke industrial control. So we do have our own robotic arms and our own automation suite. Um, we've been working with local employers uh, and awarding bodies. And I know Ben's done a, a lot of work on making sure that we're, we're working towards our own degree status on that one there. Um, some of our students have been extremely successful and, and have gone on and done higher apprenticeships where they've been able to combine their higher education uh, with an employer. Um, very, very um, competitive market, but we, we do have some success stories. And one of our students went and worked for Siemens, which is a huge engineering stroke um, automation company. So hopefully that um, flow diagram shows you your, your possible paths. Uh, we don't really do um, welcome sessions and talk about individual courses. Um, it could be that sometimes people join a course um, within a very short time, they actually decide that maybe I should have done the level two first, or they've realized that actually it wasn't the mechanical side or the, the hands-on side, that then maybe they should consider the more academic route. A lot of our students are actually apprentices. So I would say at least 60% of our engineering students are actually apprentices uh, and they will do the same qualifications as the full time students. Um, they may be slightly changed in their um, units and um, delivery style, but there's quite a lot of crossover between our full time students and what we call our part time students, which are our, our apprentices. And we have companies from Southwest Water, Gucci and Housego, the Steam Railway, um, production like Sutton Seeds, uh, Spirant, uh, but we do have a good selection of uh, companies that we work with. And we do work with our students, if they are keen on apprenticeships, um, to, to, to contact local employers and, and use some of our, um, our partners and, and, and see if they, you know, they can gain their apprenticeship. But we, we leave our um, career path quite open for the students. Um, it is a very um, different atmosphere from school. Um, uh, class sizes are, are no sort of greater than 16, 17. Um, and all the teaching staff are people that have come from engineering. Um, so we have a lot of a broad range of experience within the teaching staff as well, which, which is useful, especially when we have um, apprentices as well. So hope, hopefully that slide is, is quite helpful for you. So the next slide is some pictures of our brand new high tech and digital centre, which opened in September. So this has been our first academic year of teaching. Obviously, we've had to revert to um, remote delivery uh, because of the current situation in the country. However, um, the new building has been an extremely successful move um, from our old place in S block. All the classrooms are equipped with um, modern IT. Um, we've been able to use the building um, in, in, and, and have a slightly different approach in, in the way that we've had classrooms inside the workshop 
and we've had a new automation suite and new equipment like the robotic arms that, are, that have come into the high tech and digital center. So the high tech and digital center is predominantly engineering, computing and di digital media. Uh, we also have um, some marine students um, joining us in, in September while the upgrade at NOS, NOS is happening. So some pictures that we've uh, got from the high tech and digital center. So on the bottom bottom left, we've got our traditional machining and the two guys actually are two apprentices from the steam railway. Um, they're also above them, they're using our brand new CNC lathe. So we've got a brand new CNC lathe and a brand new CNC mill. Uh, and we've also got 16 programming stations, which we can use with the classroom opposite. So we've got 16 programming stations that, that we can use for um, uh, for CAD and for, for CNC. We also do a, a lot of electronics. Um, so the, the picture in the middle there is uh, our new digital scopes and power supply units. And in the top left, we've got our automation suite, which has been sponsored by ABB. Uh, ABB are one of the biggest engineering companies in the world. They are a Swiss Swedish company, um, but have headquarters in most um, European, America and the Far East. Um, anywhere where there's any form of manufacturing or, or, or engineering process control. So we, we were very lucky to, to work with ABB. Um, staff have received training from ABB and in fact ABB are regular visitors um, updating staff and students on, on development in automation. Up in the top right we've got our new manual mills so we still keep and we still deliver um, manual um, so the students have the, the manual skills required on, on CNC and lathes. So the course structure okay so we have practical and theory sessions and it depends which course on the percentage of theory and practical and the BTEC does come with um, a practical session or a couple of sessions um, where the level two course has a couple of days of practical sessions. They're all based around the high tech and digital center which is very useful for us because we did used to have to move around the college quite a lot. Um, all courses um, re regardless of the subject will have um, tutorial and um, this will be delivered on a weekly basis. So the tutorial looks at um, government-led sort of curriculum and this could be from British values to um, anti-radicalisation, um, looking at finance, green energy, um, we have themes uh, as well, um, learn to live where, where um, the, 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 the team come in and talk about um, drink driving and the impact of, of how that affects communities. Also as well English and maths, um, it's still a, a requirement that we should quite rightfully be hoping that our students can work towards or achieve a GCSE grade four or equivalent in, in English and maths. So functional skills level two would, would be an equivalent um, grade. But for the level two course, there is, there is an opportunity for you to improve or, or gain your GCSE. Uh, and level one, we, we can also have the option of working on functional skills for a year, um, banking them and then moving towards uh, GCSEs as well. So the next, next slide just talks about the course structure. So most full time study programmes follow a three day timetable. So we try where we can to put the three days together. Um, we have the odd course where we simply can't do that just because of facilities or, or timetables, but most programmes work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, and our apprentices, like I said earlier, they, they come in one long day a week. So timetables will be issued in enrolment. Uh, enrolment will take place um, normally at the end of August, beginning of September. Um, obviously, at the moment, we are looking at timetables and we're looking at um, um, which which facilities that we'll be using, but we wouldn't be able to give you the timetable all the days of the week of the courses at the moment. So for entry requirements, um, so what we're looking at for level one, okay, so level one 
predominantly will have learners that haven't achieved maths and English. Um, and as we previously said, this course will be delivered in conjunction with marine engineering. Our level two course, we are looking at students to have maths or English at grade four or equivalent. So we, we can also use functional skills level two. And what that's basically highlighting is that within the timetable, there is the scope to deliver one GCSE. That's maths or English. Um, for the students that don't need to do maths or English, which which happens every year and, and normally a, a good percentage of the students, they will get additional workshop time. So it, it won't be a free session because you've got your maths and your English or we'll just give you more machining to do. And at level three, so level three advanced technology, you, you need to have done level two first because it's a very practical skills where the CAD leads on from the drawing and the CNC leads on from the manual. We do get the odd student that's come from um, some form of industry or some form of machining background. And, and sometimes they join our level three advanced technology. It's quite rare. Most of the cohort come from level two. And um, this year, the level three advanced technology is going to be run in combination with marine engineering. Um, what we're going to do this year, there will be common modules, things like maths, health and safety, CAD, um, uh, business and efficiencies. And then there's going to be units where the marine and the engineering guys are going to go into their sort of sub cohorts and do machining or, or marine maintenance at level three. Um, the level three BTEC, we, we need you to have maths and English, um, both at grade four. Um, however, we have had um, the odd students that have really good GCSEs, um, but unfortunately don't achieve a grade four in their English. So what we have done and we, what we did last year was we gave them the option of a evening course for their GCSE English. In fact, it was a late afternoon stroke English um, evening course. Um, we're looking at that again this year um, and all of those students achieved their English in the November resets. So none of those students have to do English after November. OK, but we really we'd like to have English and maths and good GCSEs overall. Um, but we have had the odd one that's required is that who's almost got a, a grade four or above for, for English. So assessment is various methods of assessment um, utilised by the different awarding bodies. We could have external exams. So the BTEC will have an end of year external exam as well as assessment throughout the year. We have online multiple choice assessments and we have practical assessments as well. So the, the assessment isn't one thing. It's, it's a very variation of different assessment methods. Um, and we obviously, we would never, never do any assessment without obviously talking through it with the students first, doing practice assessment uh, and, and giving them some sort of guidance on, on how assessment is done. There's different intervals throughout the year um, and we use um, lots of interactive online um, tools such as Moodle and at the moment we're obviously using Microsoft Teams as well because of the current situation. Um, so there's a lot of stuff linked with technology and, and modern ways of, of, of saving and storing work. So equipment needed. Um, we need you to have all courses, need to have basic stationery um, for classroom and workshop. So we're expecting students to take notes um, and to have some form of folder so they can separate their units. And we need you to have a scientific calculator. If you buy a decent Casio, and uh, what we've got one on an FX model on the screen, uh, we can talk about this in a little bit more detail, maybe through through enrollment. We can give you the actual Casio that we want you to buy, and that really should should that calculator should do you all the way through until you finish your HE. It shouldn't be really be a requirement for you to upgrade your calculator. Equipment that you're going to need for the workshop. We're expecting all students to have their own steel toe cap boots or, or shoes. And we need you to have to have um, so a boiler type protective overalls. There is changing facilities at the high tech and digital centre. Um, there are a, a changing area where students can store their coats and their bags for the day. 
and there are individual um, changing cubicles as well. Um, the idea is we don't, we're not providing um, engineering lockers. You can hire a locker from the college. Um, we think it's important that, that, that students take their overalls and boots home um, just so they're maintained correctly. And we like students not to be in overalls and boots when they're outside of the workshop. So there is like an interface where the students can get correctly changed, um, hand washing facilities uh, and, and storage of equipment, etc. There is some optional equipment that um, students have, have purchased or, or you could consider. So some students prefer using a laptop or a notebook, um, which for some students is more beneficial. Uh, and we've also encouraged some students to buy their own technical drawing specialist stationery. Um, you can pick up a really good drawing set, um, which comes with all the equipment that you need for not a massive amount of money um, on eBay or, or, or Amazon or something like that. So some students opt to buy their own drawing boards. We do provide drawing boards. We have a, a good selection of drawing boards and it's not a mandatory purchase. Same, same with the um, laptop or, or netbook. So on successful completion of your course, we want to make sure each learner is, is going from where they want to be. We, we talk at the beginning of the year about what's your aspirations at the end of the course. Are you looking to progress onto an apprenticeship? Um, are you looking to go on to HE? Um, are you looking at doing HE at South Devon College or are, are you looking to go further afield? Uh, and, and then we work with our students to make sure that they have some form of progression after the course on that one there. Lots of different engineering employment. It's always a question that we, we ask or we like to ask ourselves, what is an engineer? So what, what you put on the, on the screen there is different industries from a welder, aircraft maintenance engineer, rail technician, naval architect, um, chemical engineer, nuclear engineer. One of our students was, was um, from Topness, was very successful after his course. And, and, and now works for the nuclear industry um, based up at Hinkley Point. You've got um, machinists, electrical, electronic. And when I mean electrical, I don't mean electrical installation like a like a Sparky. I mean working with heavy electrical equipment, working in the in, uh, in the um, energy in industry or manufacturing. Um, some people look at maybe joining the services or, or, or a vast amount of different types of employment. What we like to do at the college is look at the fundamental engineering skills that people need regardless of which career path that they're going to go to. So expectations, uh, expectations are high at the college. Uh, we have five uh, core values of um, learners, inclusion, aspirations, innovation and support for learners. Um, we're expecting learners to attend all sessions um, and there is an element of moving from school to college and how you manage yourself. Sometimes they, they've been used to being local at school and now suddenly they've got to get a bus and no bus timetables. Um, they've got to prepare themselves for the different studies that they have. You know, have they got maths and English? There is a range of support measures available at the college and support at the college is, is extremely good. We have a positive intervention team um, that can work with individuals and tutors to provide additional support. And, and this can be anything. This can be additional tutoring. This can be um, helping with um, transportation or um, equipment. Um, yeah, the positive intervention team are, are based at the college full time and they do a fantastic job uh, along with the help zone. A couple of case studies. So this is one, a very interesting case study. Um, this is a guy called Andrew Dial who lived in Torbay. Um, he was a, a full-time student, um, a very, very um, um, focused uh, young man, and he's now a pilot in the American Air Force, which is uh, maybe not quite what you were expecting to see. However, he was um, used his academic, um, I remember doing the, um, the reference for him to get into the American Air Force Academy, um, and they were, they were interested in his grades and his, in his attitude. Uh, and the subjects that he was doing. Um, his dad was American anyway, so he, he did have a link with the US. He wasn't just like a random thing that he'd done, but yeah. And, and we kept in contact with um, with Andrew um, and he's emailed me and just let me know how, how he's getting on, um, which, which has been really nice. 
And then we've had a, a couple of students here who've who've actually gone and worked in a company uh, and companies based in South Devon. So three students um, all worked at um, Effect Photonics, which is at the old AstraZeneca site in Brixham. And that's becoming a bit of a photonics hub in, in South Devon. And we've also now got the, um, the new um, electronics innovation center next to the college as well. So photonics, fiber optics uh, and that industry, um, we've got quite large companies as well like Gucci and Harrisco and Spirant. So these, these guys were on a full-time course and they were able to get some work experience, um, which was done through mock interviews through the college, which was, which was quite an interesting week. Um, I know that's quite a long presentation and I know I've used most of the half an hour, um, but now is an opportunity for, for yourself to, to ask any questions. Um, and we can hopefully answer your questions for you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so we've got a couple of questions. Yep. Um, what's, okay, first one, what support do you offer to people with learning difficulties? Okay, so we have um, a positive intervention team. Um, we can have support from providing um, in-class um, um, support members of staff. Um, so we'll have somebody that come in and may aid you with note taking if, if that's your requirements or we could have um, um, people that come in and maybe if if your problem is maybe understanding the question not maybe not getting the question understanding the answer so we, we can have somebody come in and, and maybe can can read an assessment out for you um, so we, we've had that put in place before um, what other examples Ben can you think of curriculum support it's quite a lot really isn't there I think it's also to do with um, if you've got um, any statement from yeah we, so we, we can obviously we can look at additional time for assessment um, we can look at um, all assessment being carried out um, electronically um, rather than than writing that that's that's not a, a problem that we can't address so we can we can provide additional time especially if you come with a with a care plan in place I think it's very important that when you come for um, enrolling or, or um, filling out an application form that you identify um, any sort of special support needs. It's not that that's ever going to put you off getting on a course. It's just the earlier that we can know about any additional support that you need, the easier it is to get things in place. Hopefully that's answered that question. Any others, Ben? Uh, next uh, one. Can you gain UCAS points through the Level 3 Advanced Technology course and is this a one year course? You um, can gain UCAS points for the Level 1 year Level 3 Technology course. Um, I think the maximum, Ben, was it 70? I think, yeah, 72, yeah. 72. Um, it is a one year course. It is a one year course, but you have to have practical experience to get onto the Advanced Technology. Um, but you need to be able to manually make something on the lathe and mill. We wouldn't expect to be teaching you how to switch a lathe on, how to set up a mill. Because the idea of that course is that we're going to move on to the next level. So we'll be doing more CNC and CAD. You will do manual jobs, but the manual jobs that you will be doing um, are using things like divider head um, and, 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 and have a higher um, tolerance. And we're expecting people to have to be able to, to 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 use the machinery rather than teaching you from scratch. All right, Ben, is that that one? Yeah, I think also with that course, because you'd have to do prior um, study anyway, you're still going to take two years if you haven't got any prior yeah. study. Yep, so you would do the level two and then do the advanced technology. I mean, that's what people traditionally do, and it seems to be a good combination uh, on those on those courses together. Any other questions, Ben? No, nope, that's it. OK, well, hopefully you found that useful. Um, obviously, uh, the, the college is, is, is still open and we are receiving emails and, and messages all the time. Um, and if there's anything we can help with in the future, uh, then please contact the college. So if following the presentation from Simon and Ben, you'd like to make an application with us.
uh, please make an application by visiting southdevon.ac.uk. Enter the name of your chosen subject into the search box. And navigate to the chosen course. Check the details of the course to make sure it matches your career goals and aspirations. And then click apply now on the top right of the page to create an account with us. Following the application, you'll receive a phone call from a tutor to the number you gave us. This is to discuss your course choice and receive a conditional offer based on your grades. If you'd like guidance following this call, please inform a tutor and our level six qualified information advice and guidance team will phone you to follow up. Following results day, if your grades are not what you expect, our guidance team will be on hand to find the right course for you. This may include a different level course for your chosen subject, but please remember you can always change your course choice before enrolling with us at the end of August. To do so or to arrange an interview, please email us at inquiries at southdevon.ac.uk or alternatively call us on 08000 380 123. We take our responsibility to support your learning very seriously at South Devon College. That's why our dedicated learning support team offers a range of services to assist your learning, including study skill support, additional maths and English support, the Lodge, which is a provision at our painting campus for learners with a diagnosis of autistic spectrum condition. We also have British Sign Language communicators, specialist equipment, dyslexia based packages and tailored programmes of study, including specific tutorial time. If you have any questions about our support, please don't hesitate to contact us by emailing support at southdevon.ac.uk. We also have a positive intervention team, as mentioned by Simon. It's a team of people within the college offers emotional and pastoral support to help learners achieve their potential, stay on course and develop personal and social skills in preparation for employment or further education. We work hard to support personal welfare and well-being at the college and can put you in contact with other supporting agencies if required. For any inquiries about positive intervention, please email piadmin at southdevon.ac.uk. We offer a bursary at the college for those with a household income of less than £25,000 before tax. Uh, this bursary offers a range of support for, stu for students, including course equipment, uniform, DBS checks, meals, tuition fees, childcare and travel. For those of a household income between 21,000 and 25,000, you will receive travel support in form of a free bus pass. And for those with a household income of under 21,000, you may be eligible for travel support and the bursary, depending on your course and your individual circumstances. Bursary applications will be open on our website from the 25th of May. In order to apply for the bursary after the 25th of May, please visit southdevon.ac.uk, scroll down on the front page and click on bursary support. Once on that page, please click on the top link, click here to apply for your bursary. You can create an account, upload photos of your household income and submit your application from there. For those that are age 19 or over and want to study with us for a level three access to higher education diploma or a level three to six vocational qualification, you will need to pay for the cost of your course. The government can help with this in form of an advanced learner loan. It's easy to apply for, doesn't take your household income into account doesn't involve a credit check. It works in a very similar way to student loans. Your payments are linked to what you earn and not how much you've borrowed. You only have to start making the payments when you finish your course and you're earning over £25,725 a year. Until then you don't need to pay back anything, but you can make voluntary repayments at any time. Should you take on your studies through to higher education and complete a course that's related to your level three to six vocational course or access to higher education course, Student Finance England will write off any outstanding balances you owe. This means you do not have to repay it. If you want a bus pass from us that's not part of a bursary, um, we are available to purchase from our partnership with Stagecoach. We can offer them a reduced price. A day rider travel pass covers the whole of the Torbay area, Kingswear, Dartmouth, Totnes, Newton Abbott, Timmouth and Dawlish. And our Explorer travel pass covers the whole of the day rider zone plus South Brent, Ivy Bridge, Plymouth, Chudley, Ashburton, Bubby Tracy, Buckfastley and Exeter. Uh, our prices for this year are still being finalised, but last year as a guide, our day rider travel pass cost £300 for the year and our Explorer travel pass cost £420. This can be split into termly payments. In order to apply for our travel pass after the 25th of May, please visit southdevon.ac.uk, 
scroll down on the front page and click on travel support. From there, you can click on SDC travel pass application form, and this will give you instructions on how to complete the form and send it back to us at funding at southdevon.ac.uk. We've also been asked when it'd be possible to come and see us at the college. We will keep you up to date by email regarding this and inform you once you've received further advice from the government about when this will be possible. Should you have any further queries at all about your application or about South Devon College in general, please email inquiries at southdevon.ac.uk or alternatively phone us on 08000 380 123. We look forward to seeing you at South Devon College.